Welcome to day 14 of the 2024 Advent of Code. For today's problem, we have a bunch of robots that move in straight lines around a bathroom, and we're given their po positions and velocities as our input. The velocity is given in tiles per second, and position of 0, 0 means the top left corner. The robots can navigate over and under each other, which means that we do not need to consider how they interact with each other, and they teleport over uh, around when they would hit a wall. Instead, they teleport to the opposite wall, meaning that the grid is cylindrical on both sides, so we can basically just modulo their positions every round. And we want to figure out where the robots will be after 100 seconds, and we want to count the number of robots in each quadrant after 100 seconds, where any ones in the middle, horizontally or vertically, don't count. And then once we have the quadrant counts, we want to take the product of the four values and multiply them together. So note that because the robots wrap around the grid, what's basically happening is each turn, their x position becomes their x position plus their x velocity, and then modulo the width. And then the next turn, we add velocity again, and then modulo by the width. But one important thing to note about modulo is it's invariant when it comes to addition and multiplication. What that means is that a mod w plus b mod w is equal to a plus b mod w. And similar thing for multiplication. What this means is that we actually don't need to do this modulo w every step, and we can instead just do plus vx a bunch of times before doing the modulo w. And because we're simulating 100 seconds, we're really just adding 100 times the velocity first and then doing the modulo. And because the robots do not interact with each other and just move in a straight line and then their position can be returned using modulo, it's actually extremely simple. We don't even need to actually do a loop. So let's grab the input first. We're going to hard code the width because this is different between inputs. And then we're going to grab our robots using the following regular expression. Because the numbers can be negative today, we might potentially have a minus sign before the block of digits. This regular expression here means either 0 or 1 minus, and this here means 1 or more digits. We want to convert each of these to an integer, and this will return a map iterable, but we want it as an actual list of numbers. In this case, I'm choosing a tuple because it just makes the most sense. And that gives us this. So this is our list of robots. And now to do the simulation, we can just for px, py, vx, vy in robots, result.append px plus vx times 100, all modulo the width and py plus vy times 100, all modulo the height. And so this is the position of each of the robots after the movements. Uh, let's quickly demonstrate this. Uh, for grid equals 0 times height for blank in range. No, wrong way around. For px, py in the result grid py px plus equals 1, and then for row in grid print row. And we can see here that this grid approximately lines up with this, or actually, no, it exactly lines up with this, uh, where we can see the same pattern, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1. That's exactly the same. So that means that this works. We don't even need to do a loop, we just need to skip ahead 100 seconds. So once we have this, we just need to determine the number in each quadrant. And the way we can do that is we will have four quadrants, which I'll represent as a list of four numbers. And then in order to determine which quadrant something is in, we determine whether it's on the left or right of the vertical median, and then whether it's above or below the horizontal median. The vertical median is going to be at half of the height, which in this case, this is row 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be 
one, it's going to be half of the height rounded down. So it's going to be height minus one divided by two, since we're always given an odd height. And the horizontal median is going to be the same thing, but with the width. And so now we can say for px, py in result, the, if the x value, which is horizontal, is equal to the horizontal median, or py is equal to the vertical median, then that means it sits along one of the center valleys, or one of the middles, which means that we want to skip over it. Otherwise, we want to add it to one of the quadrants. So we can determine the quadrant using this. If the x value is less than the horizontal median, and the y uh, value is less than the vertical median, then that means it is in the top left quadrant. So we can make that quadrant zero. If its y value is above vm, which means that it is below the, it's a greater value, so it's below the vertical median, then we can make that the first quadrant. If px is greater than the horizontal median, meaning it's to the right, then if it's in the top right corner, we can make that quadrant two. And finally, if all of these conditions are false, then it's to the right of the horizontal median and below the vertical median, meaning it's in the bottom right. And we can make that quadrant three. And so that gives us our quadrants. One, four, three, one is exactly what we expected, just in a different order. And then we just multiply them together. So we can just print, uh, we can do like top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right equals quads. Or we can even just do this, TL, BL, TR, BR equals, TL equals BL equals TR equals BR equals zero. And then instead of this, this probably makes more sense to just make us very indiv individual variables so we can understand it better. Top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right. Our final answer is just the product of the quadrant counts. That gives us our test answer. And if we uncomment the width and height and run this on our actual input, this gives us our answer for part one. Now part two is, in my opinion, an absolutely terrible problem. And I'll explain why in a second. Uh, during the bathroom break, someone notices the robots seem similar to the ones used at the North Pole, and they should have a hard-coded Easter egg where very rarely, most of them will line up in a picture of a Christmas tree. Now I have two issues with this. First of all, what is a Christmas tree? Like, the problem does not give us any specification about what a Christmas tree is supposed to look like. And so we don't really have an objective way to check for it. You could look through each image, like each frame individually, but because the width is 101 and the height is 103, that means that the image will only wrap around every 10,403 frames. And looking through that much is just not very fun. You could make guesses, but then you end up basically just winning based on luck. And the second main reason I dislike this is because it's completely not accessible. If someone is visually impaired and needs to use screen readers to read their answers and write their code and read the problem statement, they're not gonna be able to look at what an image of a Christmas tree looks like when it's printed out using like pound signs and dots. That's just not physically possible. That said, we can make one assumption here which is that it probably has something to do with the part one value. Now, it's not unheard of for Advent of Code problems to have part twos that basically completely scrap almost all of your work in part one, but generally speaking, this is quite rare, and there's probably a reason that they had us do the way part one the way that it was done. So let's think about this a bit. The quadrant count has to add up to roughly the number of robots. Now there can be robots along the vertical and horizontal median, but first of all, most of them won't be, and so that won't affect the total sum of the quadrant counts too much. And second of all, if the drawing is of a Christmas tree, then it stands to reason that we can't have a, a, a very large amount of those robots sitting in a vertical line or a horizontal line. 
specifically the horizontal line part. And so assuming that the quadrant count roughly sums up to the same, the product will be the greatest when the robots are evenly distributed, which makes sense. If you think about just two valleys first, ignoring the quadrant part, it's a relatively well-known phenomenon that if you have two numbers that add up to the same fixed value, then the product is the greatest when the two numbers are equal. Basically, if you have the condition that x plus y equals, let's say, 10, then as x gets larger, y gets smaller. And so when x is 0, the product is obviously 0. When y is 0, the product is 0. And in the middle is where it's the highest. It follows a distribution roughly like this. And so when the values are close together, you get the highest product. This does not change at all when the number of values increases. When you have four quadrant counts, this remains roughly the same. What this also means is that conversely, if a lot of the robots are in one of the quadrants, then the safety factor should be relatively low, which makes sense because one of the quadrant counts is high, but the others are all low, making the product overall not that big. We can assume that the picture of the Christmas tree is probably within one quadrant. And this assumption is mostly just a guess. Again, this is why I don't like this problem because I cannot be sure that this solution actually works for everyone, but it worked for me. It worked for one of my members in my Discord server who I asked and they had different input than me. So I'm just going to assume that this is probably the case because otherwise part one doesn't really make too much sense. And so we can just assume that's the case and find the iteration with the minimum value. So we're going to need to redo this a bit. What we're going to do is we're going to set up a loop and we're going to keep track of the minimum safety factor. So the minimum safety factor will initially start at infinity and the best iteration is going to initially start out at none. Now what we're going to do is we're basically going to say for second in range up to the maximum possible, which is width times height, because after that point, all of the robots start wrapping around again. Instead of jumping forward, we're just going to increase each of, we're just going to step each of the robots forward each time. This is just a practical matter. It doesn't really save any speed over just doing like this. You know what, let's just stick to this just because we already have this code written and I'm lazy. And this gives us our score. So that's going to be the safety factor. Let's try this on the test code again. We can see that now we get the safety factor over many iterations. And if we print out the iteration count as well, we can see that at uh, if we also just artificially increase this. We can see that at iteration 100, we have a safety factor of 12, which is what we would expect from part one. Now we're going to look for the minimum safety factor. So if the current safety factor is less than the minimum safety factor, we have found a new minimum safety factor and our new best iteration is going to be the current second. And so we can just print out the second to get us the best iteration. Now in this example, we have a bunch of zero cases because sometimes all the robots leave a quadrant, but in our full input, when we have so many robots, it's probably unlikely. Again, I'm not a fan of, sorry, I'm supposed to print best iteration. Again, I'm really not a fan of this, but you know, such is life. So let's try this on the full input. And we see after a short delay that our best iteration gave us a safety factor of 40.5 thousand at iteration 7603, which gives us our puzzle answer. So please do let me know if this solution doesn't work for you because I only have a sample size of two. I don't wanna ch bother too many people to check if this works for their input. But this is my assumption. The image is probably in one of the quadrants because that would make the safety factor low. 
And there's probably a reason that the safety factor is the product of the quadrants. And this correlation where the Christmas tree being in a quadrant would cause the safety factor to be at a global minimum is most likely not a coincidence. So again, personally, very much not a fan of this type of problem, but I firmly insist on always showing a solution that can take the input exactly as is and give out the answer exactly as is. And hopefully I've been able to keep that this time, although the problem most definitely tried to make me have to do something different. In any case, I hope you still enjoyed this video regardless, and I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.